My God is slow to anger when I go astray. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. For all of my betrayals, God will not repay. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Through mercy and compassion, God's great love is proved. God covers my transgressions like the snow. As far as east from west are all my sins removed. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. God saved me from the pit when I had lost all hope. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. From endless springs of kindness, all God's blessings flow. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Our days will fade like flowers and are quickly spent. And like the wind, our years will come and go. Everlasting favor is God's covenant. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Merciful and gracious is my God to me. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And I will tell God's goodness through eternity. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, you angels, all you heavenly hosts, and every living creature here below. Praise the Maker, praise the One and Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, you angels, all you heavenly hosts, and every living creature here below. Praise the Maker, praise the One and Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So last week we had a boy band, and this week we have a duo, or duet, duo, <laughs> duet, yeah. Good morning and welcome to First Christian Church. We are one church in multiple locations as we gather together here in Concord in the sanctuary as we gather together on Facebook Live and on Zoom. And we are, we are so glad that you are here. To our friends who are Latino, Latina, Latine, that's a new word for me. Um, we wanna wish you a happy Hispanic Heritage Month. And for our siblings who are Jewish, um, so that would be Lindsay among us, among other people that we know. Um, Happy New Year. We are one church that believes that every single person is an equal and beloved child of the divine who deserves kindness and friendship and dignity and respect. We express our love for one another through the sh through sharing and helping others. We are an, we are individuals. We are a congregation who are open and affirming of absolutely everyone, and we strive to be an anti-racist congregation. So, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So welcome home. Claudia? Good morning and please join me in our call to worship. 
the words are on the screen uh, or in your bulletin. Gracious God, you show us the meaning of reconciliation in the life of Jesus Christ. In his touch, his words, his actions, Jesus reconciled people to God and to the community. We, we gather, gather to renew ourselves that we too to might reconcile others with a touch, touch a word, or an act. Please join me in prayer. Eternal God, whose image lies in the hearts of all people, we live among people whose faiths are different from ours, whose faiths are foreign to us, whose tongues are unintelligible to us. Help us to remember that you love all people with your great love, that all religion is an attempt to respond to you, that the yearnings of other hearts are much like our own and are known to you. Help us to recognize you in the words of truth, the things of beauty, and the actions of love about us. We pray through Christ, who is a stranger to no one land more than another, and to every land no less than to another. Amen. For thousands of years, candles have been lit to provide illumination, warmth, comfort, and to engage the senses. At our church, we light candles during this special portion of our service, representing our individual prayers joined together in common petition to God. For those at home, we invite you to take a candle and light it with us. For those in the sanctuary, we invite you and your family to come up as the next song plays and light a candle, symbolizing the prayer and voice inside your heart. In this sacred moment, we open our hearts to what God has for our lives, our homes, and our church body. Please join me in lighting a candle. Mm -hmm. Here I am waiting, abide in me, I pray. Here I am longing for you. Hide me in your love. Jesus more and more. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me and I will Jesus 
It is time for us to celebrate the ways in which, the times in which, the places in which we have seen God at work in our lives this week. I want to lift up two things before I open it up to you all, and then I'll close with one. But the first is, today is not just for homecoming, but today is Ken and Ken and Bridget's anniversary. She's going, I don't know. So I will yell if okay. If it goes out, I will just yell. Uh, I'll use my preacher voice. So happy anniversary, Ken and Bridget. And yesterday was Deborah's birthday. She shall, the age shall remain nameless unless she says it. Uh, but happy birthday and happy anniversary. Those are indeed signs of life. And Roy is back. So, and I think Roy's gonna go back with the big kids this time. So, yeah. All right, anybody else? I know, right? You just have to listen to me. You can't, Troy. I know, I know. <laughs> All right. What are the signs of life that you will have? Yes. I just wanted to say coming in today with my casserole for the potluck. And by the way, if you didn't see it in the intersections, you need to read your intersections. Everyone is welcome whether you brought anything or not. So right after service, please come join us for the homecoming potluck and read your intersections so you'll know about these things. Um, but I, in coming in with my dish, walked by Stella's garden and I have to thank everyone who was here this weekend and worked in mom's garden. It is absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much. That is truly a sign of life. Amen. So I want everybody who, come on, Bill, I know you're coming up to, to help with that. Anybody who was here yesterday to help with the work day, please stand. Thank you all so much. Uh, my family said that I can kill a silk plant <laughs> and have, so. We were blessed yesterday to have six of us here to work on the garden, but we were especially blessed with our new friend, David Gonzalez, who actually understands this. David, stand up, please. Who actually understands this kind of thing and told us what to pull out and what to leave, because I'd have butchered everything, you know, and thing. And it, he contributed so much yesterday both knowledge and hard work. And it was most enjoyable 
to just stand here and be directed. So thank you very much to everyone, but especially David. Cho, yes. And we had a translator, so it really worked well. <laughs> so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Anybody else? I'm not sure if um, Renee is on, but Chris, is there anybody um, online who has a sign of life? Uh, no, I don't see anybody. Okay. All right. And I have one more. Many of you, Denise, who has been worshiping with us for years and years and years. Well, Denise was in a really severe car accident, as we've talked about. Before. I don't know if I need a new mic or a new battery. It's sound gremlins. Okay. All right. Well, we will pray away the sound gremlins. Okay. Um, so Denise was in a really bad car. And she has been, um, for the last month or so, has been in a rehab center to kind of, she broke both of her legs, broke her back, had lots and lots of damage, um, has to learn in many ways how to walk again, um, although she's recovering really, really well. But in the meantime, you all know Louie, who was her dog, is her dog. Um, and Chris said, oh, I'll take care of him while you're in rehab. So Chris, I need you to leave the sound booth for a second and come forward. <laughs> no, don't say that. I was, but we're not going to. I know. Okay. It's okay. It's all right. Don't worry about it. We're good. I know, right? <laughs> so on behalf of the congregation, I want to give you this gift card to Chewy so that you can buy whatever animal dog stuff you need. We are a congregation that helps each other in ways, in big ways and little ways. Um, and so that's just one more example. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, along the theme of uh, loving one another, forgiveness, and uh, embracing our differences. The youth will be reading Romans chapter 14 uh, today, verses 1 through 12, that talks about um, not judging someone else because they choose to or choose not to be or do something or be a certain way. And we're going to talk about that and how that uh, lives out in our lives, whether at school or uh, our, our playtime, whatever that may be. So if you are a youth, you can join Miss Diana and myself in the plan back room at this time. Thank you. It is that time when we will share our joys as well as our concerns. We've shared a lot of joys with the signs of life, but we're also going to share our concerns with God and with one another. As we do that, if you are online, please simply type into the chat. Um, oh, excuse me, type into the chat your prayer request. And Chris uh, will email that to Andy and me. Um, we're not going to read them out loud. We have discovered that you all can't hear when people are saying things in the sanctuary. So we're just going to, we're trying to make it smoother, right? So um, 
So if you will put your prayer request in the chat, if it is, again, if you're online, if it is a confidential prayer request, simply send it as a direct message to Chris, who is the Zoom elder today. Um, if you are here in the sanctuary, you've got these prayer cards um, that you can write your prayer request on. Again, if it's confidential, mark um, confidential, and then the, the elders and I will get that. If it's just for me only, just confidential, and then Pastor Leslie or Pastor or Head Lady in Charge or whatever. All right. Will you join me in prayer? Oh God, we are one in solidarity with those who live in danger and struggle. Whether near or far, we share their anguish and their hope. Teach us to extend our lives beyond ourselves and to reach out in sympathy to the frontiers where people are suffering and changing the world. Make us one in solidarity with the people we ignore, the deprived we pretend do not exist, and the unhoused that we avoid. Hear us as we lift up those people and situations that are on our hearts and on our minds. Oh God, let solidarity be a new contemporary word for us and for this community. This community into which we, you are constantly summoning us. But God, may our solidarity be genuine and not a dishonest maneuver. May our solidarity be effective and not just consist of wordy declarations. May our solidarity be grounded in hope and not in the tragedy of disaster. May our solidarity be in humility because we cannot bear all the world's troubles. Oh God, purify us in our solidarity with others. May it be genuine and fruitful, fervent and humble. We ask this in the name of him, who was resolutely one in solidarity with the abandoned and despised. Jesus Christ, your son, our brother, our savior, who taught us to pray by saying, you use the words most familiar to you or the words in the bulletin, our creator who is in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Each one of us looks not only to our own personal interests, but also to the interests of others. We come together as the Church of Jesus Christ to do this. We are devoted to a mission whose benefits are not just for us alone. This is our opportunity to share an important work in this community and in around the world. 
This is a day to live, not for ourselves, but for others. Christ has given himself for us, and God has called us to pattern our lives in the same self-serving, self-giving ways. May we who remember the sufferings of the past be called forward to remember the joy that God has designed for our world, where everyone is loved, all are fed, and all will have enough. Let us give ourselves by giving... A let us give ourselves by giving of the resources that God has entrusted to us as stewards of God's grace. Please feel free to come up and place your offering in the basket. Nothing's wrong. We're so hard to believe what we can do will be enough. You are enough. I am enough. Breathe in the love. We are enough. You
The word of the Lord from Numbers 10, 1 to 7. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, make two silver trumpets. You shall make them of hammered work and you shall use them for summoning the congregation and for breaking camp. When both are blown, the whole congregation shall assemble before you at the entrance of the tent of meeting. But if only one is blown, then the leaders, the heads of the tribes of Israel shall assemble before you. When you blow an alarm, the camps on the east side shall set out. When you blow a second alarm, the camps on the south side shall set out. An alarm is to be blown whenever they are to set out. But when the assembly is to be gathered, you shall blow, but you shall not sound an alarm. May God bless our understanding of this word. Next week and the week after, we will collect the special offering for the rec for reconciliation ministry in the Christian Church. Reconciliation ministry is that unit within the church, the program in the denomination that provides anti-racism and pro-reconciliation training and resources throughout every level of the, of the denomination. And up until August 31st, I worked for reconciliation for the last 15 months. Our gifts to reconciliation ministry are divided. 50% stay here in the region and are used to provide anti-racism trainings to congregations and to groups and to clergy. And I'm one of the anti-racism trainers in this region. And we encourage folks to think about how they or we can strive to sound the trumpet against racism and white supremacy and other forms of oppression. The other half of the offering goes to the office in Indianapolis to support the work of the trainers, the core trainers, and the Reconciliation Commission. Together, they provide grants to entities that work on anti-racism and pro-reconciliation ministries within their settings. The theme this year is Sound the Trumpet, Unmuted Ministry, Uncommon Love, and United Service. And you might wonder why I'm preaching this this week and not next week. Well, next week we're doing our visioning, uh, our visioning time together, and I'll talk more about that at the end of the sermon. Today, I want to invite us in our own calling as Christians to be bold in our faith, to love one another in extraordinary ways, and to unite in the service to God's kingdom. In our text for today, two silver trumpets were used to direct the movement of the camps uh, for marching or for battle or for fellowship um, or to gather the nation together for an assembly. The trumpeters played a different rhythm that signaled to the people when they were to gather for worship or for travel or for battle or for any other purpose whether there was just one trumpet blowing and that meant, oh, this, the leaders need to come, or if there was this kind of staccato sort of rhythm to it um, that meant, oh, we're gathering for worship or, you know, whatever. I mean, there's different rhythms that they used to call people together. We, we call each other, we sound the trumpet to call us together for worship and for fellowship and for meetings. And we're called together to serve this church, the wider community, the region, and the general church settings. So I want to start by talking about unmuted ministry. In a world that is filled with noise and distractions, it is crucial 
that we as Christians, as people of faith, unmute our voices and proclaim boldly the message of God's unconditional love for absolutely everyone. In 2 Timothy verse 1 or chapter 1 verse 7 it says for God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and love and self control God did not give us a spirit of fear and on this weekend, when we remember the 60th anniversary of the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, we remember the deaths of four little girls who were in Sunday school. Denise McNair, Carol Robertson, Cynthia Wesley, and Addie Mae Collins. We remember them. This verse encourages us to speak out, to sound the trumpet, to speak out in faith, sharing the good news without fear. We sound the trumpet against hatred and racism. Next week, on September 25th, that day will mark the 66th anniversary of the desegregation of Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. That was only 66 years ago. One of our regular Facebook Live family members is not just a Facebook Live family, they are our family because Tony's cousin, Thelma Mothershed, was one of the Little Rock Nine. So Thelma and Grace and Preston, if you are watching today, thank you. And we celebrate your bravery and your, and your sounding the trumpet against racism. And if you don't know about the Little Rock Nine, look it up. Our ministry as a whole congregation should be clear and unwavering as the clarion sound of a trumpet, calling others to peace and justice and reconciliation. We as a congregation have worked hard over the last four years to be the church that God is calling us to be. We formed the racial and social justice team, Meg and I co-lead, um, to unlearn some of the assumptions that we had as we were growing up. We have read books, we've watched documentaries, we've had discussion, we participated in marches, we wrote to Congress members and we tried to change the way we do some of the things here at church to be more reflective of who we are as a congregation and recognizing the ways in which we need to grow and want to grow. Unmuted ministry. So let's turn our focus to uncommon love. In John 13, verses 34 through 35, Jesus tells us a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Our love should be uncommon and unconditional, different from the world's love. We are an amazing and fascinating group of folks. We love each other and we celebrate all of the diversity that God has blessed us with. We are a congregation of racial diversity. We are white and Asian and Latine and me. 
We are a congregation that honors and respects all sexual orientations, identities, and expressions. We are straight, we are same gender loving, we are bisexual, and we may not be attracted to anybody at all. We are cisgender and transgender. We speak English and Spanish and Welsh and Tagalog and Cantonese and Mandarin. And there's probably other languages that you all speak that I don't know yet. So if there's other languages, let me know. Our love and respect for one another is sacrificial, it is deep, it is forgiving, and it is compassionate. People look at me and go, you're the pastor? And I'm like, yeah, I'm the pastor, and I am proud of it. When we love like this, it is a testimony to our faith. There are so many places in the world where people are not loved for who they are, where people are forced to put on a mask, a mask of perfection. None of us is perfect. A mask of meeting expectations of others. A mask of fear because somebody told them that God was a wrathful God, not a God of love and peace and justice. We have a different message. We have a message of unconditional, uncommon love. Finally, I wanna discuss united service. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 14, it says that just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all of its many, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Each one of us has a unique role to play in God's kingdom. And when we unite in service, when we work together, we become a powerful force for good. No matter how different they might be, our ministries should work together like, heart, like notes in a symphony that blend and create beautiful music. If you are reading your intersections, yes, you should be reading your intersections. If you've been reading the intersections, you will have seen that I have invited us to think about some questions about our church. So next week, we are going to spend the most of the service, about 45 minutes, refining what our ministries might be. So we're gonna start with a song and communion and the offering, and a prayer, and then we're going to have these questions that we will all work on together. We're going to pose questions about our purpose. What is God calling us to do and to be now in this reality? We are much smaller than we were when you all created the future story. So who are we now? What is God calling us to do now? Our presence, where are we called to be present? We can't be everywhere. And right now we're in a lot of different places with a lot of different interests, with a lot of different commitments. So where are we called to be present? And our practice. How do we, how will we live out what we are called to do? Maybe we can't be physically present, so we send money. Maybe we don't have a lot of money, so we send people. But how, and you know, how do we live out whatever it is that you all are passionate about? 
And how do we how do we do that from this point forward? I want to encourage you to be present in church if you can be. Be present in church so that we can have this important conversation together. If you are online, we will obviously will hear from you and you are a part of that conversation too. But if you can be present, that would be that would be great. So let us remember our calling as Christians, as people of faith. We have been called to an unmuted ministry, boldly proclaiming the gospel of Jesus's love and peace for every person. We are called to show uncommon and unconditional love, reflecting Christ's love in everything we do. And we are called to engage in united service, working together to advance God's kingdom. As we leave this place today following the potluck, let us sound the trumpet of faith and love and service in our homes, in our communities, and in the world. May our lives be a testament to the transformative power of Christ's message and may we inspire others to join us on our journey of faith. Amen. As the next song plays, all are welcome. And I'm sorry that, uh, that uh, Judy's not here because Judy specifically requested it. So we'll have to play it again. But the words are who we are, I think, said all are welcome in this place. So if you feel welcomed here, if you feel like this is where you want to have your church home for no matter how long you're here, please come forward as we sing, as we sing with the recording, as we sing, welcome home. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong. strengthen 
As we prepare to share the communion at this table, <clears throat> there are two things to remember. First, this table is open to all people. And secondly, if you are joining us from home, please feel free to use whatever you have in the way of a bit of food or drink. Uh, here at the church, we have the little prepackaged uh, communion sets, but it's the important thing is that we do this together. The meal we are about to share at this communion table is really the ultimate act of reconciliation. God's act of reconciliation through Christ for us. In the sharing of these emblems representing the body and the blood of Christ, we are proclaiming that we stand on level ground with all people. With Christ as our head, we all belong to Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give our deepest love and thanks for sending your beloved son to us. We believe that he died for the sake of all of us. We pray that we can begin to look at people, not through our human standards, but through your eyes and carry on the work you ask of us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he celebrated the pet meal with his disciples. After supper, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he offered it to his disciples saying, this is the bread of heaven, the gift of new life. As often as you eat this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And in a similar manner, he took the cup. And after he gave thanks, he gave it to them saying, this cup, is the new covenant a sign and a symbol of God's grace poured out for you and for all people. As often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do so in remembrance of me.
It's a much longer version of this than I thought we were going to do. But that's okay. So today, after worship, we are having our potluck. And there is a place at the table for all of us. So please come in the fellowship hall and let us eat together in fellowship with one another. If you um, are not on our mailing list and you would like to be, simply write to Andy, A-N-D-I-E, at, at ConcordFCC.net and get her, get you get onto the mailing list by talking with her or emailing her. On all social media um, outlets, platforms, we are at Concord FCC. And so we're not on threads yet. That's my next, that's my next site. Um, is, anyway, so, <laughs> Um, so if so, if you want to connect with us in those kind of social media type of ways, um, connect with us there. Today, after service, as I said, we are having the potluck in the fellowship hall, and after that, at about one thirty, um, the elders will meet on Zoom. So that gives us time to eat and get home and hop on Zoom. Um, so that, that, um, you don't even have to stop and get lunch someplace else because you're going to have delicious food back there. On Tuesday, the 19th, the walking club or walking group meets here at the church, um, on, at seven o'clock on that same Tuesday, the 19th, the finance team is going to meet on Zoom, just a reminder about that. On Thursday, the 21st, we are hosting the, the um, Interfaith Council for Contra Costa County, I4C. Um, we are hosting the International Day of Peace event that they are holding. So if you've seen it in the intersections, you've seen it on our Facebook page. I think that there's still flyers on the welcome table. Um, all of that. So if you want to know more about that, it's a one woman show that um, a rabbi, Rabbi Lynn Dudley, will be sharing with us. Um, and it'll be, and there's a fantastic musician that's with her. Um, and so, so that will not be an event to be missed. It will be on here in the sanctuary at seven. And I did create a Facebook, or excuse me, a Zoom link for it, for those who cannot, um, who don't want to drive at night or who can't physically be here. Um, then on Saturday, the 23rd, we've got the book club on Zoom and homeless, the preparations for the homeless meal um, that we prepare and, and bring to the shelter. Um, that uh, preparation will start at three o'clock in the kitchen. Um, and then next Sunday, we're doing, we've got both ministry, it's a busy day. We've got a visioning time together. We've got, um, and then at 1.30, uh, the ministry council is going to meet on Zoom. And there's something else. Oh, the Spanish language, just for your information, we don't have to do anything, but the Spanish language AA group is having their big celebration in the fellowship hall. So you'll see people coming and going. It'll be really fun. Um, yeah, I think that that's it. Anything? Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, that's why I need Andy. She reminds me of everything I need to remember. So if you, um, we are finally, 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 thank you, God, getting a new directory. So if you are physically here, obviously, go and check to make sure your information is correct. If it is correct on the form, just simply initial it. 
If you've already made corrections, just double check to make sure we didn't misspell something um, and just put a check mark so that we know that it's done. Um, if you are new to the church, members, you don't have to be a member of the church to be included in our directory. So if you're new to the church and want to be included, simply put your information, your contact information in, and we will add you to the directory. Um, anything else? Nope, we're good. All right. Receive this benediction. Let us depart in peace and in love with grace toward each of our neighbors. May we be joined together in the common goal of service to our God and to all of God's beloved. And may God's blessing of peace and freedom be with us all. And I'm going to add the blessing for the meal so that y'all don't have to wait for me before we eat. So let us, oh God, thank you for the food that we are about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies for your name's sake. We ask you to bless the hands that have lovingly prepared it. And we ask you to bless those who grew it, those who provided it, and those who are putting it together even as we speak. May it go on to, may this food go on to strengthen us, to live in your way and without your will. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.